So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to do a talk on why we need to rediscover the chivalric code. The Christian knight of old of medieval Europe was molded in the past to make warriors gentlemen. And in this modern time, we Christians need to rediscover the chivalric code to turn gentlemen into warriors. The code developed over time at the collapse of the Carolingian Empire when Christian order collapsed in that region and a number of barons set themselves up in competition and com um, contest with one another. Christian teaching said that a Christian could not kill another Christian. But war was common in this period. And so one of the first developments of the chivalric code was that when you had bested your enemy in battle, you would allow your enemy the chance to surrender honorably so that he could be held in ransom and so that he could be then ransomed later. This same code developed by the church and was cultivated by the church through councils. It began around the 10th century. As I said, it started because Christians were forbidden to kill other Christians. And so they had to give them a chance to honorable surrender. The church began to cultivate this system of honor through a number of councils that further restricted fighting men. And this was met with some partial success. So such, for instance, the, count, the Synod of Elm in 1027 excluded fighting for Christians on Saturday night until Monday morning. This also excluded Christians fighting one another in the period of Lent and in the period of Advent. The Council of Clermont in 1095 gave these principles European-wide applicability. And so Christians tried to stop Christians fighting one another in Europe by restricting fighting practices of the medieval night. The church continued to try to bring peace through its teaching on Pax Day, which offered protection for women, the unarmed cleric, church property, pilgrims and merchants. It essentially restricted fighting to those who fought and made a distinction between warriors and non-combatants. This continued between the 10th and the 12th centuries and was promulgated as early as 975 AD. This continued through a number of councils as mentioned. Those who fought on horses were called the chevalier, the knight. And so the code became known as the chivalric code. Those who fought had to swear oaths upon relics that they would keep the peace of God. Both of these themes, the idea of the Pax Day and the idea of the truce of God, were both reintegrated into the Christian political matrix as governing authorities once again established control over the land. And it became the monarch's responsibility to keep the peace and the truce of God. 
the first crusade that was launched at the Council of Clermont added to this chivalric crusade, this chivalric code, religious dimensions and created the first monastic chivalric orders known as the Knights Templar, the Knights Hospitaller and the Teutonic Order. And this added a religious dimension to the chivalric code. Now, in modern times, knights are no longer a thing. The chivalry no longer exist. They were absorbed into modern armies and were the antecedents of our tank regiments and our armoured regiments. However, in the modern times, the church lacks warriors. It lacks men at arms. It lacks a masculinity that can stand up for itself. And so in the past, the church used the chivalric code to turn barbaric warriors into gentlemen in these times, the church must use the chivalric code to turn gentlemen into warriors. The code that is known as the chivalric code became embodied in two principal sources, the Song of Roland and the writings of the Duke of Burgundy who wrote for the chivalric order, the Golden Fleece. And what I'm going to do now is lay down for you the chivalric code. And this code, if followed, is what a Christian man is supposed to be. It is the creation of art, as C.S. Lewis put it. It isn't that it is some soppy compromise between gentleness and barbarity or with the warrior spirit, it is the embodiment of both gentleness and the warrior spirit at exactly the same time, 100%. It lives in the dichotomy between the two. And this was the code as laid out in the Song of Roland. This is how the Christian man, and particularly those Christians who have a vocation to arms, soldiers, police officers, security workers, pugilists of any martial art. This is the code of the Christian warrior. Number one, to fear God and to maintain his holy church. Number two, to serve your Lord, your ruler, with valor and faith. Number three, to protect the weak and the defenseless. Number four, to render aid to widows and orphans and those who are destitute and otherwise economically disempowered. Number five, to refrain from wanton giving of offense. Number six, to live honorably and to live for glory. Number seven, to despise financial reward for your service. Number eight, to fight for the welfare of all that is known as the common good. Number nine, to obey those placed in authority. Number 10, to guard the honor of fellow warriors. Number 11, to reject unfairness, meanness, and deceit. Number 12, to keep the faith in your own life. Number 13, to speak the truth at all times. Number 14, to complete the task that you have set yourself to do unwaveringly and without compromise. This was the code as codified in Roland's song, in the Song of Roland, who was a mythical knight 
of the Carolingian age. The Duke of Burgundy, writing in the high medieval period, codified the chivalric code as such. And the chivalric code is as follows. Number one, to have faith in God and his church. Number two, to show charity to the weak and those who are struggling. Number three, to uphold justice in word and deed. Number four, to practice sagacity and to make astute judgments in your decisions. Number five, to practice temperance and to practice self-restraint and self-control. Number six, to be resolute, once committed, to be unwavering. Number seven, to be truthful in word and deed. Number eight, to practice liberality. And that means to be generous in spirit and deed. Number 10, I've lost count. To practice diligence. To do well that which you begin to do. Number 11, to practice valor. To be courageous in conflict and unflinching in opposition. Number 12, to practice hope which is to believe that your actions can make a difference and so you should do them believing that you can have an effect. This is the code of the Christian warrior. This is the code of the Christian man. Raise your children in it. Raise yourself in it. Practice it because the church is full of wimps and the church is suffering because it's full of soy boys and we need to wake up from this malaise that is harming the church and to cultivate a warrior spirit within the men of the church and we do this by following the church's teaching on the chivalric code for the modern world. So if you are a Christian who is a soldier, or you are a Christian who is a policeman, or you are a Christian who is working in security, or you are a Christian who is practicing pugilism, that means boxing, or judo, or kung fu, then this code is for you. The church needs to rediscover a warrior spirit and the church needs to recover warriors and a core of warriors who will defend the church, defend the faith, defend virtue and defend the truth against the enemies of the church and against those who oppose the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ.